program assistant for the South Wind Extension District with another Fair Friday video. So today we are focusing on the food and nutrition project area and specifically on presentation pieces of exhibiting a food item at the fair. So to begin with, if you want to exhibit cookies, brownies, muffins, something that's smaller, more individual, make sure that you plate it with three of them. So it's important that they are uniform in size and shape. I tried my best today. However, I'm sure I'd probably get docked by a judge with some of the corners falling off and they're not the most perfect size, but just try your best. And always remember three, that's very important. Um, you can use decorated plates like this, uh, plain ones, or even just cardboard that is wrapped with foil and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, a couple different toppings that you can do, especially with cookies or brownies, if you just want to jazz it up a little bit or enhance some of the flavors that's within that, is remember that the toppings have to be, um, they can't require refrigeration, so they need to be non-perishable. A couple excellent toppings that you can use are powdered sugar or cocoa. Uh, they're just light powder, so it shouldn't overpower or take away from your main food item, but it can add a lot of cool detail and design, being very, very simple. So my finished product here, I do have a couple uh, brownie pieces just for example of designs that you can do. Um, this one I used a doily and this one I used some foil pieces to create some stripes. So how I did that is took my sifter with powdered sugar and I laid my doily on top and I'll just start to tap and shake. Make sure that you keep the doily in one place with it. And I'll do my other ones here. And I'll set that to the side. So with the doily, if you have a bigger pattern or design, um, it will be bigger pattern and design on the brownie. So if you have something smaller, I suggest hopefully a smaller design or pattern so it can be more intricate on the top of your food item. With this one, I just use strips of foil you gently lift it up and you leave back just a plain top and it leaves sort of a snow shadow with your powdered sugar. You can just set that to the side for now. Other things I want to show is some people like to use cake boards that you can buy at Walmart or uh, different types of food stores. You can certainly use those because depending on the time of the year where you go out and purchase these, you can get different designs or colors, especially if you have a theme with your food items such as for a certain holiday or season. Um, one simple way is just to take cardboard, wrap it in aluminum foil, and then use a paper doll, a doily. So this would be ideal for a particular long food item, such as a yeast bread, a braided bread, quick bread, uh, anything like that that's typically more of a long rectangle shape. Always be sure that on the bottom of your plate, cake board, or uh, just display board, to add a sticky note, piece of paper, something that has the 4 hers name, your club, uh, what where you are from in the district, your age division, and also a simple des uh, description of your food item. So if it's non-perishable and brownies, or if it's a particular type of cake, or whatever you are exhibiting. Okay, <laughs> so I was in the food pro uh, project for many years when I was in 4-H, and an excited class that started when I was getting out was called Food Flop. So this is an awesome opportunity for if you have something that just completely flopped maybe the night before the competition, on the way to the contest, or whatever, and it breaks apart, it didn't come out right, go ahead and bring that because you're able to go through the judging process and have that professional expert talk you through to see what went wrong, what could you do better for next year. So my food flop example is this yellow pound cake, and I do know what I did wrong. However, 
I did several pound cakes when I was in 4-H, so I know that getting it out of a bunk pan can be very um, troublesome, and it does take a lot of years of practice to get it out perfect. This one, I let it cool uh, too long in that bunk pan, so whenever I tried to flip it over, it just stuck. So needless to say, some of my cake is not here, but I could still definitely take that to the fair and have it examined in the food flop class, because there's still an educational experience to be had. We're just going to pretend that this bunk cake is fine, and I'm taking it to um, the fair, and I just want to jazz it up a little bit. I help with that presentation i have the cardboard display board with a doily but this funnel cake um it's yellow that also has some citrus flavorings within it so i want to use some of the lemon and orange that's in it to help emphasize on that uh, the first main thing i want to show are the lemon roses there these are really simple to use you can use the uh, rinds of lemons and oranges just for decoration purpose so you will take a, a vegetable peeler like a potato peeler and uh, just take it off of your orange or your lemon try to get one pretty long piece of rind and then you will just start to roll it up as tight as you can it's a little bit hard since there are some juices and oils in there and when you are cutting this, it's okay if, you know, in the middle it becomes really wide or it becomes really thin. Just make sure it's continuous because just like a real rose in real life, the edges are not perfect. So it makes it pretty realistic. So just like that, that is an orange rose that we can use for decoration type. It's sort of a tricky part to have it stay together now. Um, you could take possibly a toothpick and go through there. I just want to keep it loose because it will open up by itself. Since I have some on top already, I'm just going to place mine at the bottom here. And my open end is just against the cake, so hopefully it won't move. Some other tricks you can use with citrus rind is just with the zester. Have pieces of the zest on top if you have a light glaze using some of the juice with powdered sugar put some zest in there it's very simple but you do have a bite of that citrus flavor you can also take shorter pieces of the rind and for example i have a food thermometer here i'm just looking for something that's smaller with that round shape and you can simply curly cue it around there hold it for a little bit and you can slide it off and you have a little bit more of a curly cue piece of rind that you can just set on the top of your food item. Sometimes the longer that it sits on the round object that you're using, uh, it will hold its shape better. So you can play around with that. These other examples I have here are just chunks of the rind. Uh, really, you can use whatever you'd like. Uh, just be sure to explain what you did when you have your conference judging with your judge. Other toppings you can use that are non-perishable can be hard candies such as mints. Uh, mint can be a very popular flavor within food uh, items, so you can use that, uh, crush them up, or just set them on the top as whole. Other things you can use include nuts or dried fruits or even chocolate candies, so all that. Uh, some fairs do have outdoor judging, so if you use something that's chocolate or other type of candies that might melt easily, might keep them to remember, well, that might not be the best option in case it melts on you completely. But that is all that I have for you today, so I helped, hope that some of these tips help you out and you can get ready for your food exhibits at the fair. So we will see you next time. Bye!